Hi and welcome to Copenhagen. Thanks for dropping in. Hope everybody is doing well. Today I am doing a surprise unboxing from Captured by Radiance. I recently received an email from Deborah at Captured by Radiance asking if I would be interested in having a look at one of their diamond paintings. So um, Captured by Radiance is a totally new name to me. Um, I had never heard of them before, so obviously I was really interested. I'm always interested in having a look at uh, what other companies do compared to each other. So <clears throat> I thought, yeah, definitely interested. Um, I went and I had a look at the website, capturedbyradiance.com, and I found out that all of that work is licensed, which really got me interested. So I emailed uh, Deborah back, and I said, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely interested. And she said, okay, we'll, uh, we'll send you one of her new kits. And she didn't tell me what it was. So I don't know what is inside here. So that's why this is a surprise unboxing. Um, it's as much as a surprise to me as it is to you. So this is how it arrived. Um, it's packed in a cardboard box. It doesn't have um, polythene or plastic over the top of it. Um, I see it has been opened by DHL, um, repacked, so <coughs> they've had a little look, so they've had the first sneak peek. Um, so I have no idea uh, what this kit is, so we may as well get on to it. So the first thing I'll do is reopen uh, what DHL sealed, if I can finally start. These are said and done. Maybe if we just try and take the tape. Huh. Just uh, talk amongst yourselves while we get this open. Tape doesn't feel that strong, but it's definitely holding. What's it getting there? There we go. So, find out what's inside. Okay, so the packaging is uh, just the box. No inner box or anything like that, but seems okay. And here we have the canvas. Um, already, I can tell it is definitely something different. Um, yeah, we'll find it when I open it. Um, all we've got here is a serial number, which tells me absolutely nothing. Uh, you can see we've got the scalloped edges. Um, to stop the canvas from fraying, it helps to stop it from fraying. Looks like it's stitched as well, so it looks like a, a pretty high quality canvas. And we'll open up the bag. Uh, I like that that seal opened easily because it means I can roll it back up and put it back in this sleeve until I actually get around to doing it. Sometimes you find um, some kits the glue is very strong and when you try and pull it, it tears the bag. So I like that. And the canvas is definitely different. It's um, hmm, sort of felt, feels like felt. Very soft. So we'll have a look at that in a bit. Let's see what's inside. Oh, okay. And that's it. <coughs> so, as always, I think we'll look at the toolkit, see what we get. I'll put the drills to the side just now. This looks interesting. So, we have resealable semi opaque bag. 
uh, just take things out see what we get so we have a good set of tweezers uh, metal not tin so they're nice and strong makes it easier to pick up the drills uh, very 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 sharp um, so we get a little cap definitely recommend keep that on and keep them out of the way of kids uh, you don't want children playing with these things they are very very sharp but good set good heavy duty tweezers um, I'll go for the tray I think since it's the biggest thing that I can see so we have a white diamond painting tray it has the spout which makes it easier to pour into things especially tic tac containers if you use them which I do so nice to see the spout there um, the other thing is the sides are straight and I talk about this in all the videos um, because I'm always conscious of people who are totally new to diamond painting they might just be thinking about buying the first kit or they might have just received their first kit normally you would get something like this um, in a lot of kits anyway um, either the green tray with no spout or a white tray that looks a bit like this maybe not quite as wide but the big difference is the sides of the tray are angled so when you pull your drills in here and you're diamond painting and you accidentally touch the side the tray flips over very very easily all the drills spill out land on the glue you have to use your tweezers to pick your drills up one at a time put them back in the tray very very annoying so if you do get a tray that has angled sides just be aware of that this one straight sides so if I put that down and touch it I mean it will flip if I press really hard but we're only talking about just gently touching you can see the difference so much less likely to spill the drills from the tray so I really like that I like to see companies who have realized that this is an annoyance at best so they've switched and they have straight edge trays so they don't flip over as easy, easily um, small thing but once your tray has flipped over a few times um, you will begin to wish you had one with the straight side so next I'm going to get washi tape so um, I don't know if this is random or if this is what you would always get this one's green and white stripes I'm going to guess it will be random um, washi tape is used for different things again for people who are totally new um, <clears throat> not many companies supply a standard so the washi tape a lot of people use it to put around the outside edge of the diamond painting because the glue goes slightly past the picture and that's to make sure that the full base of the drill sticks to the glue you don't want it um, short of the picture then only a little piece of glue is holding the drill and might fall off so with the kits the glue always goes slightly over the edge and because of that when you're diamond painting you'll find it, the edge of your hand when you're working near the sides um, sticks to the glue and it's irritating the other thing is things stick to it like pet hairs, eyelash hairs, eyebrow hairs, dust, um, crumbs if you happen to eat while you diamond paint um, but in general it starts to get grubby uh, over time as you work on the diamond painting you'll start to see a dark mark where that glue is instead of being white it'll end up a sort of greyish colour um, so what people do is they use the washi tape to um, mark around the outside and just cover that little extra glue they don't put it on the picture but just up to the edge and that way when you finish a diamond painting you can peel um, the tape off and everything is nice and clean um, the other thing is if you if you don't cover the glue um, and you wear long sleeves you may get some material um, like, um, like little pieces of uh, fabric sticking to the glue as well so people use this to keep the borders nice and clean so when they finish a the diamond painting peel the tape off it looks like new um, another thing people use it for is to help section um, I don't know what the cover is here I'm, I'm going to guess it's going to be clear just one big clear sheet but we'll find out um, and what people do 
They like to work in sections, so they use washi tape to mark a grid on top of the clear cover, and then they cut along the washi tape um, to cut out sections. If you don't use the washi tape and you try and cut a straight line with the cellophane cover, it tends to wander. It's really hard to cut it straight, so people would use washi tape for that. So either or really, I don't think there's enough washi tape to do the whole border and a grid. Maybe there is, I'm not sure. Um, it's not something that I do, I, I don't do either. Um, I, I, I'm just careful on the edges, I keep my hand up so it doesn't touch the glue, but um, I know a lot of people wouldn't, couldn't be bothered to do that. Um, so they use it to keep it clean. So that was something extra, I wasn't really expecting that. Um, then we get diamond painting pen, um, just a clear pen, and it has a small multiplacer on the end. And we have the standard nylon tip with the brass inset, totally standard. Um, so the actual pen is standard. A lot of the time you will get a pink pen from a lot of companies. But this one is clear, um, just a bit different, and it has a multiplacer already in. You can take it out. Um, so you have these multiplacers and what you can do is you push this into the wax you get a little channel here of wax and you can pick up uh, I think this is a three placer so you can pick up three drills at a time instead of one and that comes in handy if you are working on an area that is all the same color instead of doing one 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 you can do three 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 so it speeds it up so multiplacer and just talking about the pen, you can see there's a squidgy. Oh, actually, there's another multiplacer in here, so there's a big one. So, if you're working on a larger area, um, again, fill this channel with the pink wax, get your drills in a nice little row in your tray, and then you can uh, use that to pick up um, quite a few drills in this one. And as I said, they just pull out so you can swap them over. If you suddenly get to a large area of, say, black, instead of doing one at a time, you can do a row at a time and speed it up. If you come to an area that's not that big, but big enough that you don't want to single place it, you could use a smaller one. So you, these are interchangeable. You just use whichever one you want. <clears throat> um, what I was reaching for was the squidgy. In this case, a nice pink one. And again, for people who are totally new, not all companies provide them. Um, sometimes you'll get squidgies and they go over the pen. So when you diamond paint, um, it makes the pen a bit thicker and it's spongy, so it makes it a bit more comfortable. Might be beneficial to people who have a touch of arthritis in their hands and find, pro uh, find it difficult to hold narrow things for any period of time. So that can help to make things more comfortable. So squidgy included. And then the last thing I think is wax. Now I said pink wax I think. Um, this is different, it's not pink, it's blue. So we get two pieces, three pieces. Three pieces, oops. And that one's just disappeared. I'll find it. So, three pieces of blue wax. Now, whether this is actually any different, um, I don't know. Uh, it works exactly the same way as pink wax. It could just be it's a different colour. I haven't tested it uh, to see if it lasts any longer than pink wax, but the idea is exactly the same. You push your pen into it and you use that to pick up the drills. So, nice little caddy. Nice flat base as well. A little bit of something. Um, so yeah, a bit of weight in it, so it won't get knocked around too easily. It'll tend to sit where you put it. So yeah, quite nice. Um, screw top lid, so it helps to keep it clean, stop any dust getting in when you're not using the wax. And uh, it helps to stop it drying out as well. So nice little addition. So that was the toolkit, um, 
good tray, really like that, straight edges, I wish all companies would do it. Good set of tweezers, nice, heavy, steel ones, not tin, the silver tin, bendy ones that are pretty much useless. Um, a little caddy with the blue wax, like that as well. Washi tape is included, as a, well it's not an extra, it's included, but it's a bonus. Um, then your diamond painting pen with a squidgy and two multi-placers. So, nice kit. Nice little bag as well that you could use to store other things when you're done. But for now, I'll just put everything back in. I like the fact it's resealable and um, it's relatively thick. So, um, pretty durable. I'm sure you could use it for other things, resealable. So, just put everything back. And then we'll look at the drills. <coughs> so the first thing I know straight away is the drills are in resealable bags. Now, I really like the idea. Makes it a lot easier, especially if you're totally new to diamond painting. Um, you don't have to worry too much about... I don't know where I keep getting this pink stuff. Um, you don't have to worry about buying containers and things. You can work from the bags. I'm just trying to figure out how they... Open this one. Should just be a glue strip along the side. Trying to find it as I put the hard part. I know it's there somewhere. There we go. So these bags just open like this. You just peel the little strip. And then you can take the drills out. Now, I don't know if these are in numerical order. They might be. Um, if they are, it's a good idea to try and be careful and take them out in order. But I'm not going to go. I just want to see what we've got. So, one spare drill floating about in the bag. Nothing to worry about. So, resealable bags, they are a good size. Um, Nice big bags, good quality bags again. Um, just having a look at the drills. The drills are square and yeah, it looks like they were in order until I messed them up because I can see this is one, two, and there's three, four, five. Yeah, they were in order, but I've messed them up. Um, so we have the number. So this will have X number of colours. It starts with one and goes up to whatever it is. Um, and then we have the DMC code, which is this 154. Uh, that is a specific number to a specific shade of a colour. Um, for example, we'll say green. So if you just said it's green drills, I'm just picking what I see here. So we've got green, we've got green, we've got green. What green? Uh, right, just out of that, there's another one. So all of the, oh that's a, well, that is a yellowish green, so it's still green. Um, we have all of these different shades of green. And the way we tell the difference is because, is with the DMC code. So this particular shade of green is 704, this shade is 702, this shade is 905, this shade is 470, and this shade is 164. So the DMC code is important because if you finish the kit, you've got some bags left, they're already labelled, so you don't need to bother writing the DMC code on them. But you keep the spares, you're working on the kit in the future, it happens to have DMC code 470, and you run out of drills. You look at your little bags and you find, oh, I've got some left in here. You can use these on that kit, as long as the DMC code is the same, so 470, and it has to be square drills. So it's a handy thing to keep them. The fact that they're already labelled uh, in the bag um, means you don't actually have to do anything. All you have to do is keep them. So maybe stick them in a little box, put them in numerical order. Forget the very first number, it doesn't really mean anything. Um, it's the DMC code that you want. So if you have them all in order, so if you're looking for a specific number, it's easy to index them. So really, really like that. Um, just 
can check the drills bit of static that's what I was checking for you find that if you've got static the drills will stick to the bag now it could be if I open the bag they just drop but I don't think so I'll try it again no you can see the drills are hanging about inside there um, <clears throat> I'm guessing that these are resin drills it's an issue with resin drills um, for some reason they build up static in the bag it's, it does it with a lot of companies that use uh, resin um, it's just one of these things um, it is a good idea to get rid of the static before you start because it is annoying and you can't get them out of the bag you can't get them in the bag they stick to your fingers and they jump out the tray sometimes that sort of thing I do have a video showing how I would get rid of the static in these bags and I did one kit that had 197 colours that had static in every bag and I got rid of static in every bag um, so it definitely works so I'll put a link to that um, how to get rid of static um, if it's something that you've never came, came up against or you're just curious um, you can have a look at that link and see how, how I get rid of it so we'll say it's resin I'm sure it's resin drills um, See how close these colours are. I don't know if it looks close in camera, but in the real world, these look very, very similar. But they are actually two different colours. We've got 939 and 823. So that's why these numbers are important to make sure you've got the right shade of a colour. <coughs> so, um, just pick another one at random. Open the bag first, let some air in. And again, um, static. So, definitely something that you want to get rid of. But the thing is, you have to balance it. Okay, we've got static, but resin drills are shinier, they're better quality than your, your sort of standard drill, uh, drills. So, the end product is going to look a lot nicer. Um, the only thing is, you need to figure out how to get rid of that. Uh, once you get the static off, um, it doesn't come back, so it doesn't build up again. It's, it's just when they make them, static is created in the bags, and once you get rid of it, it, they're fine. But I would say get rid of static before you start. It's just annoying when they start sticking to different things, um, and they're not going where you want them to go. So I'm not going to go through every colour. I'm just going to have a quick look. I can see we've got AB drills here. As I said, I still don't. I don't know what the picture is. Um, I'm just. I'm just having a look by the colours. Quite a lot of green, um, so and quite a lot of blue. Mm, I don't know. I'm. I'm going to guess something with sky and trees. There's more green in here, but we do have yellows and reds and purples. So. Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to guess it's something to do with sky and trees. Again, the blue strip is along the side. But I am impressed with the packaging. Um, it is very well done. It's very neat. Um, if I if I just took more time, um, I could just slide these out and keep them in order. But I do put my drills in containers, so I will be switching them anyway. But again, I'm thinking about um, people who are new to diamond painting, they're just starting. They don't have any other type of container. Um, you can work directly from the bags. And I just noticed all the ABs are here. Um, so these are all ABs, so we have uh, five. 5 ABs. Again, for people who are new, AB uh, is short for Aurora Borealis. The drills have a special coating on them, so when you tip, tip them, tilt them, um, in the light, they reflect different colours. So these drills are red, but as I move the bag about, I can see gold, yellow, purple, green, uh, blue, all from the one drill or, or the same colour of drill I should say 
So rather than just being red, when you walk past and the light hits these drills, it reflects different colours just depending on the angle of the light hitting the, the drill. So you'll get all these little flashes of colour um, and it looks really cool. It's a really nice effect. Um, so yeah, we've got five ABs. You can see on here it's got 321, that is the, the actual colour of the drill. And then they've got AB at the end. So you know that they're Aurora Borealis drills. So it actually tells you on the bag that they're ABs. Whereas if you look at the other ones, they just have the number 3854 and nothing at the end. ND, that's something new. What is ND? Yeah. It's got some kind of coating on it. I'll need to do another video about these and um, do a close up. I don't know what ND means. But I'm pretty sure um, it's mentioned somewhere on Captured by Radiance's website. Um, I, I didn't spend much time, I just had a quick look and thought, yep, I really like the fact that um, it's licensed artwork. And again, new company. So I was really curious to see how they pack their drills. Not all companies pack them as nicely as us. In fact, a lot don't. Um, resellable bags, I really like that. They're well labelled, nice and easy to read. Um, I'm really curious about the ND now. Um, I'll probably do another video and talk about this um, find out what it is. So that's the drills. Um, <clears throat> I didn't keep them in order, so they're all mixed up now. So I don't know how many colours we've got, but it looks like quite a few. You can see there is a, a lot of blue, blue and purple. I'm, I'm still guessing. I don't know about the yellow and red though. Um, I'm still guessing something to do with sky or sea. So that's the drills. Um, resin drills. There is static. Um, but once you know how to get rid of it, it isn't a big issue. There's another ND. Yeah, I need to have a look at them. So I'll put the drills to the side and then we'll get to oops, a little loose one. Um, and then we'll get to the canvas and find out exactly what we're working with. So I'll just place these gently to the side. I won't throw them or anything because I don't want any bag popping open. That would be a disaster. Hide. That's a nice colour, I like that. 820. That's quite a lot of it as well. Two bags. Okay, so. <coughs> now the big moment. Um, I'm not sure if this is a vertical or horizontal. Um, again, the canvas is actually it's quite thin. And it's uh, yeah, don't know. very smooth, very soft. Mm, okay, so the key goes that way. So we've got the key or the index or uh, what you want to call it, the legend. So we can see how many colours we've got looking at this. So it starts at one and it goes all the way down to sixty. So we have. Uh, 60 colours on this one and I'm going to open it up but I think I'm going to switch some lights off because I always get reflection on the clear cover and I've already seen it as a clear cover so I don't know if that's going to be too dark but it reduces reflection a lot so we can actually see what we're looking at okay Definitely trees. Huh. Okay, uh, so we have Facebook, the Facebook group captured by Radiance. We've got Instagram captured by Radiance. I think I'm going to try and switch a light on. 
I'll try this one. Not too bad. <coughs> oh, that's nice. Ah, okay, so now I've got this inside. Makes things a bit easier. So we have uh, Captured by Radiance, your masterpiece awaits, and this is Blue Moon number 6, B-31, don't know what that means, uh, by Andy Russell, licensed by MGL, www.mglart.com, and it is an 80 by 60, so 80 centimetres across, 60 centimetres down, Really nice, I really like that. And then uh, we have the legend, or the key as I call it. And I can see we have pre-cut labels. So if you do have containers, instead of trying to write symbols and things, and numbers, draw numbers, or draw symbols and write numbers, um, you can actually just peel the labels off, stick them on your container and it's done. So, we can see the symbols, which are actually different. Um, yeah, some symbols here I've never seen before. A few, in fact. Uh, the musical note, I've, I've never seen that as a symbol, diamond painting. Um, this one looks, I don't know what it is, but it looks like a little turtle. The male symbol. Yeah, some of the symbols are different. But I like that 1 is 1, 2 is 2, 3 is 3, 4 is 4, 5 is 5, 6 is 6, 7 is 7, 8 is 8. That's a good start. Um, it's nothing worse than getting a kit where the 1 is like 12 and 4, 2 is 6 and things like that. Um, I've seen it happen. So nice and easy for the first 8 numbers. They just refer directly to themselves. And then we start going on to letters and then we start going on to symbols. They don't have things like um, zero because a zero could look like an O um, and, and that sort of thing. They don't have a nine because a six, if you happen to turn your diamond painting upside down to reach part, um, it can be confusing if you've got a 6 and a 9 because suddenly the 6 becomes a 9 and 9 becomes a 6 and it can be easy to get mixed up. So they're making a point of uh, not using symbols that can get mixed up, which I really like. Um, they've obviously thought about that, so that's nice as well. So that's the key. Um, huge thumbnail, high quality, nice. Um, some companies you will get an A4 sheet of paper, it looks like it's been printed on a home printer with a little thumbnail that is basically useless. Um, I really like that they've um, printed a big high quality image so you get a really good idea of what it's meant to look like. So yeah, I like that. So we'll just go a bit along. Need a bigger table. And then we have, uh, the stuff is up here as well. And um, it says, blooming number six by Andy Russell and ah okay I like that as well um we've got the, the index here people would be diamond painting and look across here to to check the numbers the thing is if you've got a large diamond painting what people tend to do um like for I was starting this one I would start in the bottom right corner that's just where I start and I would work this far as I could comf comfortably reach and then I've still got that section up there that I can't reach so what I do is I turn the canvas upside down and I'm sure pretty much everybody does this because then I can reach the parts that I couldn't before so uh, this would be completed maybe up to about here so everything above here would be done so then I can start on here. Now I can either start working so it joins to that or I can start in this corner and work in, on, until it joins. The thing is, in I think all of the diamond paintings I've ever seen that have got the uh, the key on either side, which is most, um, 
the orientation of the key is the same for both sides. So when you turn your diamond painting upside down, your key goes upside down as well. So you're sitting here working and your keys are both upside down. This one is different. They've printed one one way and one the other. So I've turned this upside down, but the key is the right way up. And then if I was working on this side, the key is the right way up. That's clever. That's that's somebody who's thought about this because all of the large diamond paintings, once I, I get this far up the table, I turn the picture upside down. I do it with all the big ones. And they've always been both keys upside down. So that is something different that I've never seen before. And that is why I like to try uh, companies that I've never tried before and see how they compare to each other. And you just get little things that you think, well, yeah, that's clever, that's different. Um, and I like that. I like the surprise as well that I don't know exactly how they're packaged and, and how good or bad the print quality is. Um, this is obviously poured glue. This is the clear cover that I was talking about. There's a clear cover, again, for people who are new. There's a clear cover all over the diamond painting. Like cellophane. As I was saying, if you are working, again, we'll start in the bottom right hand corner because that's where I start. Um, if I was working here and was using the clear cover, I might want to cut the cover up. So I, I would probably work a section about that size. So what I would do is cut up and then fold this back. Um, the, the thing about it is if you um, are doing that, and you use scissors to try and cut this stuff the line will not stay straight it tends to just go where it wants so that's what i was talking about earlier when i said about the washi tape what people do is make a grid on top of this make it the sort of size that they want to work so they've got all these squares then they cut up the middle of the washi tape and that keeps their lines nice and straight the advantage of doing that is you can decide how big or small the squares are. Some people like to work bigger areas. Um, I would personally, I would work an area about that size. That's big enough for me because I don't always have that much time. Um, so I like to try and get a section done when I, when I work on them. And basically, I complete that section. I come along. I would cut it again. I'd do another section. Once you've put the drills down, the, the cover won't stick to the diamond painting because you've covered the glue with drills. So, but then you've not got to worry about anything sticking to the glue. If you do part of it, um, fold the, the cover back again and um, it'll stick back down on the glue. Um, I'm not sure, but probably you have to watch that you don't turn this cover the wrong way around because in a lot of cases, the non-stick side is only on one side. So if I peel, I'm not going to try it, but I know with a lot of kits, if I had peeled the whole cover off and then just didn't look at what way I put it down and then put it back down again, and if I had turned it, it could stick to the whole diamond painting. Now, I don't know if that's the case with this. Um, I could test it, but I don't want to, just in case I ruin anything. But it's always good to put it, the covers back the way that you found them so that's why i would cut this and i would fold it back and then just let it fold back down again so yeah that's definitely something new i've never seen that before having the key both ways thinking about it really really clever idea to make absolute sense so yeah that was nice so uh the only thing to do now is have an up close and personal look at the actual print quality um, I can see it's poured glue so I mean there's no air bubbles or anything like that it looks absolutely fine it's nice and sticky I don't see any issues with it at all but what I'll do is we'll do a, a little close up and just have a look at the print quality see how easy it is to read the symbols 
and uh, yeah we'll do that now so now uh, we're going to have a closer look at the actual print on the canvas and we're just looking to see how clear it is um, can we make out of the symbols uh, is there any misprint faded print blurry print anything at all so looking at it I, I cannot see any problems with it at all everything looks nice and sharp and clear um, no problems with it when uh, I emailed Deborah back and I said yes I'm definitely interested in having a look at one of your diamond paintings uh, I asked her if she could give me a little bit of background um, about Captured by Radiance how they started and what they're aiming to do so she did reply um, it was a pretty long detailed reply so what I've done is I've printed it off and I'm just going to read the reply um, while you have a look at the canvas so this is the reply from Deborah Captured by Radiance was an idea and dream of mine starting back in 2016 I have been diamond painting since 2015 and my sister and co-owner and founder started diamond painting in 2014 To be honest I didn't even know she had diamond painted until 2018 when I spoke to her about looking into opening a store. We both laughed about it for some time. After speaking with my sister Tamara, I told her that I was going to start doing some research on diamond painting. And after a year of watching many YouTube videos, listening to unboxing and post reviews, and reading thousands of comments, I believed that this gave me the path of what I would like to bring to the diamond painting community. One day I sat down and thought to myself, what can I reference to when deciding the canvas quality, glue and diamonds? Here is what I referred to. When building a house, you need four major elements to make that house safe and stru structurally sound. One, a good strong foundation. Two, strong structure. Three, beautiful interior. Four, beautiful exterior. Diamond painting is no different, let me explain. Foundation To have a strong quality diamond painting kit, you need a high quality canvas. A canvas that is strong yet easily workable, soft and scalped edged and stitched to prevent fraying. This is your foundation. Structure Your structure is your glue. I have worked with all kinds of glue, double sided, mounting adhesive, poured glue. And without a high quality glue, your foundation is weak. We wanted a glue that was strong yet flexible, meaning that if you were to place your drill down and it was a bit off, all you need to do is give it a wiggle, move it into place, press down and the drill remains in place. There's nothing worse than to work with glue that lacks strength or a glue that is so sticky that you must remove it from the drill area just slightly uh, to just slightly move it in place I know exactly what she's talking about with that um, double sided adhesive if you don't get it exactly right um, you have to pick the drill off and then place it again <clears throat> the poured glue you can slide it which is a lot better um, interior the interior of a diamond painting must be bright and vibrant this would be your drills slash diamonds Poor or dull coloured diamonds will make any diamond painting a disappointment. So to resin diamonds, and that is what they need to be pro pro produced correctly, or <coughs> excuse me, or you end up with a lot of garbage. I have always said this: you will always get garbage in your drills. However, it is, if if it is a minor amount, that is great. If it is an average amount, that is good. If it is a large amount, that's not good and we need to be assessed to find what the problem is. Exterior Toolkit I only bring up toolkits as a small but expected factor. We all have received those super basic toolkits but for a high quality kit. Super basic is not good. We believe that a toolkit should have everything needed in a kit, not just the tray, pen and wax. 
Our toolkits are upgraded and offer more than just the basics. Without the four key elements mentioned above, the quality of the kit will not stand up. It is very important for Captured by Radiance to follow these four elements and, <clears throat> and if any of these elements are not up to our standards, we communicate this to our manufacturers to resolve. The group that we work with has been very amazing and always eager to resolve issues that I bring to them. Another very important element is artwork. I believe that all artists need to be recognised and paid for their artwork and Captured by Radiance only offer licensed artwork. The first eight images we started with were stock images, however. We paid, we paid extended licensing to use this artwork for commercial use and the money went directly to the artist. Captured by Radiance opened on September 1st, 2021. My sister Tamara decided to turn pens for the store. She has been turning pens for a few years and this last summer decided to start making custom pens. The pens are made of acrylic, hybrid, which is acrylic slash wood, and wood. New things will be introduced with the hand-torn pens this coming year, and Tamara will be making her own blanks soon. After opening, after, sorry, after being open for six months, we reached out to a licensing art agency where they had many great artists to choose from. We were able to obtain artists such as Adrian Chesterman, Dominic Davidson, Andy Russell and many others. This year we signed Rose Prophet Creations. As I mentioned above, we are looking at introducing new items to our store. We are planning on making our own cover minders from resin and creating new designs for the hand turned pens. Another thing that is important to Capture by Radiance is feedback. This helps us continue to improve our products and is always welcome. Always, Deborah Haas. So that was my very first look at a diamond painting from Captured by Radiance. And I have to say I was impressed. Um, the canvas quality is very, very good. Uh, way above sort of uh, average or standard kits. Um, the print quality is excellent. The colours on the print are really, really nice as well. The thing with the, the key or the legend, um, having it one way on one side and upside down on the other is something that I've never seen. And I think this is the 53rd diamond painting company that I've reviewed and it is the first time I've seen that. I don't know if anybody else is doing it, but definitely a first for me. And as soon as I saw it, I immediately thought, that makes total sense um, because if you're working on big kits you will end up turning it upside down because physically you can't reach the top of the canvas if you're doing the larger ones. It makes total sense um, to have one key upside down so when you turn the, the canvas around um, it's the right way up. So really really good idea. I don't know if that was Deborah that came up with that or, uh, or not but yeah I liked it. Um, the kit, um, again, I like the fact that the tray does not have the angled sides. That was always a, a peeve with me when I started diamond painting and I was using the little uh, green trays. The number of times that I accidentally touched the side of a tray and flipped the drills onto the canvas, I have no idea how many times I did that. It was very, very annoying. Um, the trays are very light and they just they flip far too easily. Um, so it's nice to see um, that, um, that they have decided to use the straight edges and the tray is a little bit bigger so it makes it a bit more stable as well. I know it sounds like a small thing but it is very irritating especially if you're totally new to diamond painting and you just think well that's just how it is. Um, you can improve on that and some companies decide to, a lot of companies don't. Um, so. The other thing is licensed artwork, always nice to see that, that the actual artist gets something back and um, that work hasn't just been copied from a picture somewhere on the internet. 
and uh, companies sell that and the, the original artist gets nothing back for it. So it's always nice to see companies who have got some sort of morals and actually want the artists to um, get something back for the work they put in. The other thing is if the artists are getting something back they're more likely to produce more artwork so then we get a better selection of artwork and high quality as well. So um, yeah that, that was really nice. Um, that, that is uh, the only thing that I was going to mention was when I looked on the website um, it's, it's kind of obvious that the website is still a work in progress. Um, when I went to the diamond painting pens there was nothing there um, but I understand that they're, they're still working on the process but what I would say is if you have a question about anything contact um, customer support which is probably going to be Deborah. She is extremely helpful. Um, as you can tell by the reply she gave me I asked her if she could tell me a bit about Captured by Radiance. Uh, she didn't just copy and paste something from somewhere else. Um, some companies tend to do that. They just find something that they wrote ages ago and they, they just send it. And, and you can find it on the internet word for word. Um, I like the fact that Deborah sat down and actually thought about it and took time um, to create that email. Um, it, it's nice to get that sort of personal feeling um, that it's actually a person who cares at the other end and not somebody who's just firing out diamond paintings for the sake of it. Um, you can tell that she's passionate about what she does and I, I really like that. So uh, yeah that is the first time. Um, the other thing that I have to say is Deborah loved the diamond painting. Um, I only did that once before where I said to a company just send me something it'll be a surprise and they did and it was a baby panda sitting on a cloud holding a heart-shaped cushion. Not something I would have picked. So um, I, I just said, to, Deborah said we'll send one for new kits and I just said okay don't tell me what it is and it'll be a surprise. Um, it's a, a very nice surprise. Um, Andy Russell's artwork is very distinctive, very bold, very bright and translates very very well into diamond paintings. So um, yeah, I really like it. Um, it. It will appear on the wall when I finish it at some point in the future. Um, it will be up here um, so people can have a look at it. But I have no idea when I'm going to get around to actually doing this one. But I do like it. Um, the other thing is the, the packaging for the drills is one of the neatest I've ever seen until I opened the bag and just basically threw them on the table. But if you are new to diamond painting and you don't have any kind of storage system and you work from bags, if you open those bags and just gently take them out, they're all in order and um, ready to go. They were very, very well packaged, very neatly done. So I thought I would mention that as well. So yeah, I was very impressed. So that's it. Uh, I think this is Diamond Painting Company 53. I'd need to check, but it sounds about right. So um, yeah, hopefully uh, I have some uh, new ones coming up from companies that people may not have heard of. Um, but if you uh, enjoyed the video and you want to see more about Diamond Painting, unboxings, unbaggings, comparisons, accessories, anything to do with diamond painting please remember to subscribe and hit the notification button if you do that you may catch me live on youtube um, i've just recently started again um, been too busy to find time but um, i'm starting to get back to it so i did a live it was just a test but it ended up being a 40 minute test and quite a few people dropped in and it was nice to um, start talking to people that i haven't heard from for quite a while so I'm planning to do more regular lives, so if you want to drop in and just have a chat, see what I'm working on and talk about diamond painting, talk about the weather, talk about whatever you want, please feel free. So that is it for today. Thanks for watching and in the meantime, take care, be safe and wash your hands.